So we're in Adobe Photoshop and what I'm going to be doing is demonstrating three different ways we can create gradients in Photoshop. Now as you can see I've already selected all the colors I want to use in the video today. I always find it much more handy to select the colors I'm going to be using prior to creating a gradient. This allows me just to get a quick overview of what colors I'm going to be using and how they might fit together. So as you can see what we're going to be doing is creating four different examples of how we can create gradients. So to start off with, what we're going to do is we're going to be using the gradient tool itself. So to find the gradient tool, we can go to the left hand toolbar and around halfway through the toolbar, you'll see the gradient tool. And as you can see, the shortcut to the gradient tool is G and that's both for Windows and Mac. So once I've selected the gradient tool, as you can see, the top panel has now changed and it now provides a variety of parameters that allow us to customize our gradient into the version that we are looking for. So the first thing we want to do is obviously select which colors we want to use for our gradient. So what we can do is we can go to the first option here and press on this box. And as you can see, a small gradient editor has now appeared. So here we can customize the gradient itself. Now you'll notice that Photoshop offers a variety of presets. These are a range of gradients and colors that Photoshop has already selected in advance. As you can see, some of them are purely color base, ranging from two colors to multiple colors but there's also the option to use transparency within the gradients where you can create a fade between a color and a fully transparent layer. So what I want to do for my document is to create a custom gradient based on the colors that I've already selected. So to do this, what I'm going to do is focus on this bar right here. So I'm going to go to the bottom left hand corner of this color selection and press on this color stop here. And as you can see, the parameters have now changed at the bottom, which allows me to customize this color, which is the first color in our gradient. So I'm going to press on the color itself. And as you can see, we now have a color picker. If you want to learn more about how to use a color picker, then do check out the video I've done on that. It's called the basics of color, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. So I'm going to go over to the colors I've already laid out in advance, and I'm going to select the first color. And as you can see, it's now changed the color picker and I can press OK. And it's now changed the first color in our color range. Now to add another stop, I can simply press anywhere along this line at the bottom. As you can see, the cursor changes from a eyedropper tool to a hand tool. So what you can do is once it's on the hand tool, as you can see, it says click to add a stop. So I'm just going to press right here. And as you can see, it's now created another color within the gradient that we are creating. So once again, what I can do is I can press on this stop and press on the color and select the next color in my selection and press OK. Then I can just repeat this process, do this again, press on this color and select the next color. Then one final one I'm going to create, color blue. Now another quicker way that you can do this is if once you press on the stop itself, you don't actually have to go to the color, you can just automatically press on a color and it will automatically change it. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to space out these stops equally. So as you can see, the distance between these two stops is currently very slim, whereas the difference between these two stops is rather large. So what we can do is we can make sure first that our two stops on the end are at the end. So what you can do is you can hold on to it and drag it. So as you can see, the location is zero and 100%. Now the location refers to how far along this bar this stop appears. So for example, this one is at 100% and this one is at 0%. And anywhere in between will be the relative percentage. So for example, I have five stops and if I want them to all be distributed equally, I'll need one at 25%, one at 50% and one at 75%. So what I can do is I can press on the next stop. As you can see, it's currently set to 21%. So all I have to do is press 25% and click off it. And it's already moved our stop to 25% of the way. I can then press on the next stop and press 50. And on the last one, I can press 75. And as you can see, all of our stops are now equally distributed along our gradient. Now, as you can see, we can't actually see our gradient at the moment because at the moment, our stop on the left is at 100% opacity, but the stop on the right is all the way at 0% opacity. And we obviously don't want this to happen. I want to have a consistent solid gradient throughout. So in order to change this, what we have to do is we have to adjust the stops at the top of the color range. So for example, if I press on the one on the left, you can see the opacity is set to 100%. However, if I go to the one on the right, the opacity is now 0%. The location still refers to, just like we had below, how far along the color range our stop is located. 
So this one's at 100%, just aligned with our blue. And this one's at 0%, aligned with our pink. So what I want to do is I want to change the opacity of this final stop to make sure that this is a solid color all the way through. So I can just simply press 100% in here. And as you can see, our gradient now appears in full. Now, if I quickly go back to one of the stops below, one of the things you might have noticed are these two dots that keep appearing between all of our stops. This refers to the midpoint between two of our stops. And this basically allows us to adjust where um, between these two stops this gradient really changes. So for example, it's hard to explain. What I'll do is I'll move this stop. Now you can see if I keep moving it towards the blue stop here, the gradient only changes within this last percentage here. But if I move it all the way here, the gradient changes much harsher at the purple end. So I'm quickly going to undo that because I want a smooth gradient. And as you can see, this stop has another percentage with location. This time the location is between the two stops. So this would be 0% and this 100%. So I'm going to set it to 50% because I want a smooth gradient between the two points. Now it also allows us to adjust the smoothness of our gradient. And this basically refers to how smooth the change will be between all of the colors. If it's set to zero, the change will be much harsher. Whereas if it's set to 100%, the change will be much smoother. Just like with the colors in our previous video, you can also name this gradient and create a new preset so you can use it in the future if you're looking to use this gradient on a more frequent basis. So now that we've selected our gradient, what I can do is press OK. So now that I'm on the right layer, what I can do is I can start to draw my gradient. So to create a gradient, it's very, very simple. At the moment, it's set to linear. So what we can do is we can left mouse click and hold. And as you can see from the place where we first left click, a line appears. And depending on where we place this line will determine how our gradient is created. So for example, I want to have a diagonal gradient. So I'm going to draw a diagonal line and then release. And as you can see, it's now created a gradient with all of the colors that we have. If, for example, I wanted a gradient that was going from left to right, I could start on the left and drag all the way to the right. I can hold shift to make sure it stays aligned. And as you can see, it now creates a gradient in that direction. So now we've created a very, very simple gradient with five different colors. But now what I want to demonstrate is some of the other options that we also have for creating gradients. So I'm going to go quickly back to the colors and change it again. This time I want a much more simple one and I also want it to be transparent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the second preset, which as you can see has a foreground to transparent, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And as you can see, it's now already taken us to that preset. So I want to change the color to start off with. So I'm going to press on this one and I'm going to select the first color of my next range of colors. To keep it simple, I'm not actually going to use any of the other colors. So I'm going to press OK. So in our first demonstration, we created what is called a linear gradient. This means our gradient is essentially drawn in lines but we can also create gradients using other shapes. So if we go to the top hand bar, you can see that there are several other options right here. So it's currently set to a linear gradient, but the next one along is called a radial gradient. So if I just select that and just quickly make sure that I have the right layer selected, I can now hold in the middle and drag out and draw. And as you can see, it's created a gradient that originates from a central point. And this is what the radial gradient does. I'm quickly going to undo that by pressing Command Z or Control Z for Windows. You can also go to Edit, Undo Gradient. And I'd like to demonstrate the next one along, which is called the Angle Gradient. So this is quite an interesting one, but what I'll do is I'll demonstrate it first so it's easier to explain. Now, as you can see, it's basically used the line that I've drawn and created a gradient that does a full 360 around the point we originated from. It's slightly hard to explain, but I hope that the visualization makes sense. I'm going to undo that once again and select the next one along, which is called the reflected gradient. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another line from the center point. And just by holding shift, I'm going to keep it aligned to my Y axis. And as you can see, it's basically created something very similar to the linear gradient. But instead, what it's basically done is it's created a gradient going upwards and a gradient going downwards and it joined the two together. So for example, if I undid that and drew it this way instead, you can see that it's created these two gradients because our gradient is from the color to the transparent. So it starts at the color from where my center point was and it's become transparent, but it's also done the same, but vice versa, the other direction. Now, one thing to point out, which you might've noticed if I undo that quickly, the gradient is essentially calculated on how far the line is drawn. So for example, as you can see, the blue dot represents where our line started. This is where the gradient on the left 
in the top hand corner is going to start, the color in the current scenario. And where the cursor is now positioned is going to be where the transparent is going to start. And the gradient is going to be constructed from one point to the other, like so. And then finally, we also have the diamond gradient. So I've just selected the last one. And what you can do is you can draw out and very similar to the radial gradient, it's going to create a gradient, but instead it's going to be in the shape of a diamond. Okay, so for the next demonstration, I'm going to be using the next set of colors, but this time I'm going to be creating the gradient in a slightly different way. So I'm actually not going to be needing this layer, so I can delete this layer. And what I can do is I can go to the adjustments and go to gradient. And this is essentially going to create a layer that is just made for gradients. So as you can see, it's created a window where we can adjust all of the properties that we also could do before in the top hand corner. So once again, what I'm going to do is create the next color. So I'm going to select one, create a new stop, select the next color, create a new stop and so on. I'm then going to make sure that they're all aligned evenly. So I'm going to press on the first one and set that to 25% again. And then the next one to 50% and then the last one to 75%. And I'm also going to make sure there's no transition between the opacity. So I'm going to press on the last one and set the opacity to 100% again. And press OK. And as you can see, it's already started to generate our gradient. Now, one of the things you can do is you can reverse the gradient by selecting this option. So as you can see, it now starts with the lighter colors as opposed to the darker colors. And so you can also adjust the angle and scale of your gradient. And you can also adjust what kind of gradient you're looking for. So for example, if I wanted a radial gradient, as you can see, it's created a radius. And for example, I can adjust the scale, make it much larger or much smaller. And I can adjust the angle from which the gradient is starting. So I'm just going to set that back to 90, which is the default. And I'm going to press OK. And if you ever want to go back and change the properties once again, you can go to the gradient in the layers panel and double click on the thumbnail to get those properties up again. And if you want to be able to move your gradient, all you have to do is click and drag the gradient around until you're happy with its positioning and then press OK. Now, also just to quickly demonstrate how you can wrap this gradient within a text object, what we can do is I've already created these assets in advance. I've just created a quick black background behind this gradient layer and a clear text object. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a clipping mask to the text object itself by pressing Alt on my keyboard and pressing on the gradient layer. As you can see, it's now masked to the text itself. So this is just a very quick and easy way to apply a gradient to text. I'm just going to zoom out again quickly by pressing Command and minus or Control minus on Windows. And so now the last way we can create a gradient is very, very simple too. I'm just quickly going to go and select the correct layer. And so I have a layer here and ready. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a solid color to my layer. So I'm just going to go to the paint bucket tool, which is the same as the gradient tool, but just the next option down. If you hold your left mouse button down, as you can see, the shortcut is still G. I've got black selected, so all I have to do is press on the layer. And as you can see, the color has now changed. We can then double click on the layer itself in the layers panel, and it brings up this layer style window. Now, this is another way to apply a gradient to a layer. So what we can do is we can go to gradient overlay. And as you can see, our color has already changed. If I move this to the side, I also want to be able to see my colors. And we're very familiar with all of these settings by now, but as you can see, we can once again change all of the properties for our layer. So I can go and create a custom color first again. So I can go and select all of the colors that I have pre-chosen. And now make sure that they're all spaced evenly like we did before. And this time I don't have to worry about the transparency. Our final stop is already set to 100% for opacity. I can then press OK. And as you can see, our gradient has already been created. So if I wanted to change the angle, for example, it automatically gives us a nice little preview here. But we can go around and change all of the properties that we are looking for. I can make the gradient much smaller, or I can make it much larger. And once I'm happy with it, I can press OK. Now the handy reason behind creating a gradient this way is you can always turn this effect off. So you can go to the layers panel and as you can see, we have an effect which is the gradient overlay. Now you can always press on one of these two eye icons to turn this effect off. 
So you can press on this and as you can see, it's automatically restored it back to the black color that we filled the layer in originally. So this is just another quick and handy way to create a gradient without actually adjusting the layer itself. Okay, so those were the three different ways to create a gradient within Photoshop. I hope this has given you a good overview of how gradients work within Photoshop. Do let me know in the comments below if you have any further questions and please do leave a like on this video if you enjoyed the content. As I said before, I will also leave a link in the description below to the video that we did on colors. So do check that out if you're curious to learn more about the color picker.